Hello there everybody. I'm here sitting on the floor today because I want to talk a little bit and demonstrate how the keyboard developed in size from the 1700s really all the way through to the present day. And I find it fascinating because of course um, early composers were restrained by the, by the size of the keyboard, what they could write and the sounds they could produce. So I'm going to tell you about what the size was um, approximately and then you can go off and explore some of the pieces um, of that particular period to see if you can put it into practice. So back in 1700, the very first pianos actually, they had a really small keyboard and they started on C2. Now if you're not familiar with the numbering system on the piano, um, the first C on the piano is C1. The two notes beneath that are zero. So zero A, zero B, and then we get to C1, my nicely tuned, newly tuned piano, which is very exciting. So C2 in 1700 went up to F6. So not very much at all. One, two, three, four, four and a half octaves. That's all people had in, in 1700. And then where do we go? Well, very soon after that, that's right, in 1770, we extend down a little bit lower and they manage to take it all the way down to F1. So they added on one, two, three, four. That note down there gives extra resonance and things. And then where do we go? After that, yeah, Broadwood. So of course, remember there are different countries having different, it was a bit of a competition, a bit of a race to see who could develop the piano um, the fastest, who could come up with the latest innovations. You know, it's like the tech world of today, but it was the piano back then. 1792, Broadwood, English maker, very, very influential, extended the treble all the way up to C4, 5, 6, 7, up to C7. So you've got from um, F1 down there all the way up there. I'm hoping you can see that. Note. Let me just change it so that you can all the way up to that C there. Um, and then where do we go after that? So in, oh, which comes first, 1805, certain makers, I think the Viennese school, extend it a little bit higher up to an F, an F keep forgetting, six, seven, eight, um, um, F7, all the way up there. I'm still not convinced you can see that. There we are, we're all the way up there, F7, okay? And then, really hard to get the whole keyboard on here, and then I'm going down to the bottom again, there we go, let's do it that way. Um, we've been on F1 for quite a while, since 1770, and then, then in the mid, 1800, 1800, 1850, we then get all the way down to C1. So we've got all the way from there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and, seven and a half octaves, let's call it, by 1850s, that was the general size. And then of course today, since that point, the standard size has become that A0, all the way up, to C8 there. But did you know, let's come back to me for a moment, did you know that the biggest pianos available today, I think it's the, um, certainly a Bursendorfer Imperial Concert Grand has an eight octave range, eight octaves. So that would take up a, a little bit more space down there. The standard range though is seven and a quarter, seven and a quarter. Well, I find that fascinating and I find it particularly interesting because then you go and look at your Mozart and your Haydn and you see why they go, here we go, we're back to this sort of, this kind of range maybe for a little bit. And they suddenly hop down an octave. Beethoven does it all the time with his left hand. And then he would have run out so he has to go, go back on himself. So a little bit there for you about the keyboard and its development and how it affects the music that was written at the time and indeed the way we play it. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye for now.